traffickers to hand our ever undercover agents as much as $1.5 million at a time. I had about 1.5. I put up about 1.5. And I was just telling my little man to put up a half a mil. He tells somebody down in Lawton Prison about this deal. Only thing that he didn't know is that my man Wayne found out. My man Wayne is like, this dude is down here talking trash about you and your deal. This is how much anger he built up for me. So I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, man, we gonna get this dude, but we gotta do this right. We just can't be running up on like that in broad daylight. So I go to Florida Avenue, I go meet my man down there. So as we get in the car, I go to the back and get a revolver from my stash. So I pass it to the kids that's sitting behind me. So my man, he's sitting in the middle. But he don't know we slipped the revolver to the kid in the back who's gonna hit him in the head. So we run about five or 10 minutes after we get the gas. Bang. That's when my man hit him. I give the signal to the rear view mirror. So my man hit him, two shots in the head. All you hear is, Ugh. he winds up shitting on himself from his muscles relaxing. So he's sticking up the car and all that. So we had to find somewhere to dump his body. So we wind up taking him over to this park, 16th Street in Northwest. I mean, he remembered everything in such great detail. When I heard about these murders and all that, it was like, nah, man, he can't be talking about the same dude. That's just sound like if he was a monster or something, man. Alpo was the closest thing to Don Corleone, a godfather guy, that we had. He gave orders, other people killed. I was called then to have a meeting with the lawyers, which they had showed me the crime scene pictures of all the murders that Wayne was charged with. To have seen some of the the murders that were committed, you know, you don't, you look at him like, damn, you know, and you know, I asked him, what does it feel like after you kill somebody? You know, his response was, some of them, you know, he thought about after, some of them he regretted. So my lawyer came back at me. I was like, listen, man, they really want Wayne Perry. They want you too, but they really want Wayne Perry. And if you got anything good on him, they willing to make a deal with you. Alpo is a, was a smart businessman. He looked at his odds at tangling with the feds and realized that he had more information that he thought could trade, he could trade to get him out of this predicament. I remember that the first meeting that we had with the agents, where he had to sit across the same agents who were prosecuting him, who had arrested him, who had been investigating him, for so long, um, and now he was like working with them. Alpo brought to the table that kind of businessman callousness. <laughs> and so when he's doing a dope deal or deciding whether to, to kill somebody or not, it was business. That's what drove him. He rarely ever acted out of personal anger or animosity. He made dis business decisions. When, he came, when it came to dealing with us, it was the same. He'd already made a decision, look, let's do a deal. And it's like, he, he is using his own terms, it's like, let's negotiate a contract. He thought he was like an NBA player. And here we are, sitting down, he wants to play basketball. It's just a matter of negotiating terms of the contract. Poe was so slick that he outsmarted them. He just beat them to the chase. He knew that any moment they knew where his money was or whatever, that they didn't need him no more, he would be disposed of too. He orchestrated the police to come and buy the murder weapons that was involved in his murder. Now, one of the guys that was involved had the weapons. So Poe was corresponding with him from prison and nobody knew especially Wayne, that he was setting them up. He was able to provide enough information uh, to put Mr. Perry at the place of the murder and also to, um, to provide the motive for Mr. Perry to commit the murders. We had very powerful forensic evidence in Alpo's case so that Time after time after time, he would say something happened, the murder happened this way. We had very powerful forensic evidence to document it. We had DNA, we had blood analysis, 
we had ballistics. All of these weapons had everybody's fingerprints on it. So with those weapons, they had confiscated the MPV van from in front of my house. I mean, we were tearing up carpet in a van and finding pools of blood underneath the carpet in the van subjected to DNA testing and it was matched to the victim in multiple instances. And then they had the key witness, which was Alpha. So that was a done deal. Then Wayne was fucked all the way around, okay? That was the one murder that carried the death penalty. I'm personally opposed to the death penalty as I've told the president, but I probably asked for it. The death penalty was originally for Pop. When the government came at me, they was trying to give me the death penalty. We got you for this murder. We got you for that murder. This is capital punishment right here. You done. I will ask for it as I have consistently, and I will advocate for it as the law of the land in particular situations if we can secure such penalties. She made the decision that um, we could negotiate the deal with Alpo and take the death penalty off the table. Wayne told me that this nigga is trying to get these racist motherfuckers to inject me with a needle and kill me. Once you've taken the position I've taken, you gotta tell it all. Even if the judge wants to give them the most lenient sentence possible, the judge can't get below those mandatory minimum sentences unless, with one exception, unless they snitch. Then it's like a magic key to the, key to the jail. You're facing seven life counts in D.C. and a consecutive life count in Virginia plus firearm counts running consecutive. So, if you lie to us, even one time, the deal's off. Poe let the system rape him and turn him into something that he wasn't. He was a hell of a good dude, you know what I'm saying? But he let the federal government rape him. There is no other option when you play as hard as he played. Give or take, if it was Wayne that they caught first, Poe probably would still be out on the streets because Wayne is a true man to the game. Uh, he went out like a soldier. If you in the street, man, you know that's a no-no, man. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. There's no getting around it, man. A snitch is a snitch, man. You understand? And if you're still in the game, you don't have any other choice. You have to turn your back on him. And he understands that more than anybody. Once the decision to cooperate was made, there was no turning back. came out the 14 murders that I copped out to. When I say copped out to and all that, being in my position and doing what I had to do for me, as far as testifying and all that, I had to confess to those murders. I had to tell those murders. He never backed down from nothing. He said what he said. He, he said what he did. You know, he ain't covering up nothing. He ain't bitching up to nothing. He did what he did. In life, in life, sometimes you make choices. And sometimes those choices are good, and sometimes they're bad. He wasn't born a killer. But when you run in with killers, you begin to be a killer. When I asked Al about a particular person that he may have killed, um, I was hurt when I heard it. And, um, he explained to me that, you know, sometimes in the game, it's either you or the person. And he said at that time, it had to be the person or it would have been him. We received a letter from him. Um, the boys uh, wanted to read it and we showed it to Adam. First of all, it said, you know, where he was, that he was in jail and how long he was in for and what he'd been up to um, to get there. And that he was very sad and he wished, um, he wished he'd, 
he, w he wished he'd done differently and he, that he had good memories of everything that we, you know, that, that he'd done with us. The whole, just the whole 16th Street family and everyone, I wish them a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, I know, look at me. Got these damn antlers on my head. This is what, I don't, this is what I've been reduced to for, for Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm trying to keep the holiday, I'm trying to keep the holiday spirit, you know? 11 years trying to keep it going instead of being a bar humbug.